Hey everybody, it's time for Tech Talks April with nobody else than Neil and Amy. Woo! <laughs> Hello, Good way, guys. Happy, happy April. Uh, it, it's yeah, April it's Fool's time. Day today. It Are is. We, uh, was I it should have played a joke on you guys. Oh yeah, we should have. Uh, <laughs> that was a missed opportunity. We could have done I, that. Yeah, I don't know when a joke's happening and when it's not. Some days because I'm just <laughs> sort of focused on stuff. So anyway, happy April, everybody. And I'm I'm not usually on here. Well, I'm usually listening and in the background and off camera. But um, if, for those of you that don't know, I'm I'm Neil's wife, and and um, I work with him with some of the technology issues kind of the fun part because I'm a former educator so I like the artistic stuff and and that side of it but um I'm happy to be here today because I want to share some things with you along with Neil yeah. so yep yeah and 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 realistically this is uh primarily going to be Amy today um because she does uh a lot of these things uh for us but but the 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 topic that we wanted to focus on a little bit um is built around the the whole scenario of, of recruitment right now and and you know marketing your program and and helping to uh get students to the finish line as the year comes to an end and, and all of that we've been thinking about that for quite a while here um with the work that we do helping adult ed programs and uh so we've got this sort of we we think it's a seasonal uh sort of uh approach uh, the seasons of adult ed programming and uh, there's different things that are essential depending on the season you're in and so amy's going to spend some time talking about that she's got lots of good good slides and and stuff like that uh to share with you and um you know i just appreciate everybody being here today i'm going to turn it over to her and uh i might jump in on occasions if i feel like there's something mm -hmm. i can add but or if i miss chat <laughs> oh, okay all right. Well, it's really good to be here. Like Neil said, um, the my part of, of what we do together is to look at kind of programming, um, because some of you, for those of you that don't know me, some of you um, don't know that I worked for Wayne Township Adult Ed for about 15 years and um, on and off kind of more than that. But um, uh, that's one of the things that made me passionate about our program and growing the program for adults. And um, as I, as time went on, I went from teaching to being the supervisor of their career training, then realized I loved the classroom. So I switched to supervisor of high school equivalency side. Um, and that's where I learned a lot about policy and I was PDF. So that stuff is in the background of my mind as we are doing what we do together, um, what Neil and I do, which um, you probably know Neil from Connectable. Um, some of you may have our portals that which we use. Um, but the, the key to this is technology just can't be applied and it fixes everything. We have to look at kind of the ebb and flow of timing with adult ed and some of the specifics that aren't true of either K-12 education or college education. It's kind of its own niche. And so that side of it is always in the back of our mind whenever we're doing marketing or outreach. Marketing is kind of a, a no-no word sometimes with education. It's just outreach. And, and it's really adult education needs it because you know it, our, our education isn't compulsory. We need to spread the word. So that's why we'll, we'll talk about some of the strategies we will today. So one of the things I learned too is that across the board, as we've talked to lots of programs, our goals are really all the same. We have different little flavor on each one and, and our, we all have our own strengths and our own needs, but for the most part, we have the same goals. We all wanna look at our enrollment and make sure that we are reaching more people in the community. We want to look at retention um, because once they start, we don't wanna lose our students because that counts against us as well and it doesn't help the students. Measurable skills gains, that's whether it's on the HSE or English language learning side. Completion, because we all know that students, we, we all know students who've gotten there, gotten almost there, and then life happened and they quit and they never finished. So we want to make sure that they finish what they started with our programming, whether that's learning English, getting a high school equivalency, or doing career training, or getting a job. So all of those things are important. So that's why I say, you know, with HSE, and career training and employment, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I got to take a drink in the middle of this, sorry. 
whether it's HSE or career training or employment, it's all about completing what they started. So then that can kind of be overwhelming um, because we can't do it all. We look at those and how do you how do you reach everyone and grow them and make sure they keep attending and have the retention rate and you know all of those goals we just talked about it can be overwhelming and the answer to that is what we talked about a little bit in the beginning is that you need to look at these in seasons and i think it'll help you to isolate some of your efforts i think there's something in the chat um, i don't know i don't want to miss any questions no, I got you. If, oh, if, you got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. If something okay, comes up. Good. All right. Um, thank I'll, you. I'll jump in with it. Okay, perfect. Um, so as we look at this, <clears throat> oops, I clicked out of this. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this phrase or not. Um, I actually learned it from my husband, Neil. He explained this to me when I was overwhelmed one day, um, but nobody eats an elephant except for one bite at a time. And that's what you think about. I mean, everything in adult ed, we have so many needs and our hearts are so passionate about those needs. And we want to do everything for our community and for our students. And, and so, you know, it's, it can be overwhelming to reach all those goals, but we have to kind of isolate those and do it kind of one at a time. And when you think about marketing, I want you to think about it in three areas. And um, one of the co conferences talked about this too. If, I don't know how many of you attended co but... Um, one of them talked about the fact that there are three sort of sections in your outreach, and that's that's your owned marketing, things that your programming can do. And th those are things like a website or social media, your email newsletter, your flyers. Those are all things that you as a program own and they're created by you. Um, that's what I'm gonna focus mostly on today because that's what we have control over. And, and we're, we're really good at this. This is, we know our students, we know our community. So we're in the best position to do this type of marketing. Um, the earned comes later because that's after you've gained some trust and you've had some accomplishments, um, you know, like reviews and things like that. And then there are tons of paid marketing. Some are pretty good. Some I wouldn't pay for. And I'm going to share um, a couple of the pluses and minuses about that. So that's how we're going to do this. So first starting with the owned part of it is the website. And of course, you know, <laughs> we love technology. So I don't start with the website just because we're techie. Um, it's because it's really important to us in a lot of ways. And this is something I never knew as an educator. Um, when I was an, a middle school teacher in Wayne, I um, went through and, and Every time that there was something on the website, I, you know, I was like, oh, it's on the website. I looked at it. It was only cosmetic. It was pretty much static information. But for us, it's different. For us, a website, it's a tool. It's not cosmetic, although it's, it's good to be, you know, sleek and modern looking. The most important thing is your functionality because it is your tool. It's how you're going to sort of manage your students. So that's important. And, you know, before I go on about that, I know this is something that we, we encounter so many times. I know there are tons of adult ed programs who don't have control over their website because it's tied up in the K-12 system. And, you know, we've, we've dealt with that so much, but there are ways around that um, and ways that you can approach that, that um, have been some really great solutions for a lot of programs who were in that same situation. So don't think it's the end of the road if, if you're tied up in your, your school system and you don't know how to, to break free from that because um, we are different. It is a tool for us. And we can help you with that. If anybody, you know, has any questions or about ways about, you know, approaching that, we can help you with that too. And if I, I'll jump in real quick here with something on that. Um, this is an important distinction to make. If, if you're, anybody's ever stuck in this uh, world, here's one thing that's really important to make. K to 12 schools uh, are not relying on their website to attract students in. They, they are there, they exist, they, the, the student population comes uh, regardless of the website. Adult ed is, is focused on attracting students into a program that they aren't necessarily thinking about or looking for. And so it's really important to make that distinction. And, and one of the things we do with helping programs is to help them make the distinction between uh, why an adult ed website needs its own separate and distinct home versus the, the K to 12 district website, or in some cases associated with a college uh, as well. So just a couple, one thing to think about there is that the ultimate goal 
uh, is different. And because the ultimate goal is different, most adult ed websites will not get found or accessed as well hidden inside a K-12 uh, school district site. So it, it's just an important thing to realize because it is a tool. And especially if your school has like a career center tied to it, a lot of times that gets mistaken for an adult ed site and that can be confusing too. So, but that being said, your website is most important because it speaks the language of your community. Um, everybody knows the world of using websites for different things. Now, even if you're not techie, you know, you, chances are you have somebody that's shown you how to pick up your phone and Google search for something. Um, that's the first thing that our kids look at when they want to know how to do something, they Google search it. And it doesn't occur to us, uh, let's say more seasoned people, um, because we, you know, we didn't always have that, but especially, you know, the young adults today, that's, that's their first go-to. So we, we need to really speak their language in order to to get through to them. And then this is really important. And I will tell you, I never realized the importance until starting to do what we're doing with technology and with programs. Um, and especially when I started out doing this with Wayne Township Adult Education, because it was, we're a massive program, first of all. Um, there's a lot of need in that community. So it's easy to see why once we did this, we started getting waiting lists and things. But here's the problem I didn't um, always see the functionality of it. So, you know, if you want to blast out information and get students in um, and you do say a flyer and social media ad, and then maybe announcements within schools, all those different kind of arms of your program reaching out, if they all come in a different way, chances are something's going to get dropped. And I'm sure Neil probably has something to say about this because I didn't know that. And I created some things for Wayne Township and students could come in everywhere. So I thought we would have all students and then there would be 20 more who got the link off the flyer and then another 10 who called in. So we didn't always have them in one place and we weren't able to communicate with them consistently. Um, so that one doorway is important. And what I mean is this, on your, on your whatever you do, whatever marketing, you wanna link it back to your website because that is how students are gonna come in and you're gonna make sure that you have everybody that's interested. Uh, otherwise you'll miss someone. Uh, my doorbell's ringing. <laughs> Maybe that's something Neil can help with too. <laughs> um, and it also gives you useful data because it's just fun to see trends. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of things that you can see on the back end of a website that tells you commonalities that are really going to let you know about your program. Maybe you have a trend with more older students in one area of programming. And so that's something that you need to know about their needs because they're uniquely different from your 18 year olds needs. So you need that data. And then, like I said, all marketing efforts, no matter what, need to go back to that. Everybody needs to be on the same page so that no matter where those students come from, they come, they all funnel into one way so that you guys can um, catch them and communicate with them in the way that you want to. So then here, I just wanted to show you a couple of the websites um, out there that, that show just, see, they all have their own unique look and feel, but some of the common things are that they're clear. It's easy. It's easy to see where to start. I don't know, my, our Zoom is hiding some of it, but each one of them has a really clean and clear call out because you want them to click where they, what their interest is. Whatever it is, you want it to be really easy and clear for them. And these programs did a really good job of that. And um, two of them, three of them used to be tied up in their K-12. So, so it really um, is something that's accomplished, you know, that you can accomplish. And then the other piece of your own is social media. And this is something, again, it can get a little bit out of hand if you're not really careful and methodical with how you do it. Um, but one of the things um, that we do with social media is get into the Facebook groups because you want to reach your immediate community immediately around your school, first and foremost. And uh, there are a lot of people you would be very surprised who don't know you exist. And you know, right now, almost everybody is on a Facebook group, you know, in your community. Well, the thing about adult ed is if you offer programming in that area, even if it's a different county or something like that, like, for example, when I did it with Wayne, it was Marion and Hendricks and Morgan. Well, I could cover those three areas and I would have permission to get in those Facebook groups because I would just be honest and say we offer services to the community. 
And so when you do that, when you start to post, then you could do it in a variety of areas. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, but the other thing is with social media is to frame your messaging. This means be really careful about your word choice. You wanna be, be brief, but powerful and, and use lots of key words that people respond to. And here's what I mean. When it gets to be springtime, and we'll talk about this later, but when it gets to be springtime, I like to put in our messaging, something about whenever we talk about graduation, we always kind of hint at that to give that motivation and that inspiration. Um, but when I start to talk about it in the springtime, I say, I make sure I include something about the cap and gown because students want a cap and gown graduation. Even if they say they don't, I've found that they really, I mean, it means something to them emotionally um, to do something that they hadn't done before and be able to walk through. So, you know, different little keywords. If, you know, free, free is a really important keyword to include because the first thing you get asked is how much is it? And when they find out that you offer classes for free, um, it really speaks to them. So be careful about your messaging. And I can't say enough about being brief. And this is coming from someone who is not always brief. <laughs> um, and Neil could probably attest to that too. Um, but, you know, I started out, I wanted to tell our students everything. Oh, I want them to know this. And I want to know this and this and this and this and this. And what I started to learn about with this uh, digital marketing is you want to give them one place to click. And then when they click through, they can get the get what they want. If you blast them with information in the ad or in the post or whatever you use in the in the flyer, if you want to put every bit of information on there, they're going to tune out most of the time. I mean, I would uh, sometimes I tune out if I see too much words and and too many words mean that I'm going to have to spend time and teachers don't have time and all of that kind of stuff. So, so, and with students, you know, sometimes if they, if, if they need our services, reading kind of scares them. And so you don't want to be too wordy. So cutting that down is really important to a few powerful words and then a link to your site to be one, one place to go back. And then make sure that you hashtag, um, Jen's told us before about IAACE. Also, it's really important get to know your school corporation and and hashtag and put them in there as well, because it can start to change the relationship between adult ed and K-12. I know there was a kind of a perception before years ago that, you know, K-12 and adult ed are in competition with each other. And it's so much not the case now. Um, you know, there are so many ways we complement what K-12 does. We're not, you know, stealing students or anything like that. We are providing services to the family and family literacy and that kind of thing. So just if we frame those conversations differently and start to do things like that, sharing your, your good and inspirational stuff with your school corporation, that'll slowly change. And then when you use social media, and for example, I'm, I, use, I always use Facebook the most, it's really fun to watch because you get lots of shares and you get people, even if they're not interested, they know someone who is and they will tag someone and it's chances are it's someone you don't even know, but they, you know, not necessarily your, even your friend group, but they know someone who needs it. And so they'll tag them. <clears throat> and here's the other thing. If, oops, that's not the part. If you tag them and you see that they respond or that they come through your program, that's awesome. But I would mention that you saw them come through so that that really provides that connection. But a lot of times if somebody tags someone else, it's because they might not have the courage to take the step themselves. So it's kind of, it's something that you do to follow up with them. And that is, you know, you see their name, they never took a step, but you might just put like a generic form letter um, to message them because you can message people, even if you're not their friends. And you can say, hey, I noticed um, that your friend tagged you in this post. Did you know we have services? How can we help? You know, something like that. Just a real brief, not stalkerish, <laughs> but, but just brief so that you can offer. And sometimes that's all it takes for them to take that next step. I found that that happens so many times. It's just crickets. They don't do anything. But then I message out to them and they're like, they sort of tiptoe into it. And then you can start a dialogue where you can do what we all do really well is engaging with our students and welcoming them in. And then it's really important to publish. I think, I think Neil terms this as a marketing term called evergreen, but it's always fresh material. Um, so it's, it's always important just to keep your image up that way. But even more importantly, I found later is that 
um, when you publish information that's time sensitive and only specific to that time, sometimes people don't read carefully and they just happen to be scrolling through and they come across an old post of yours for whatever reason and they click it and they get frustrated because it's really not there or they thought there was a boot camp, but it was really last year's boot camp. So every time we do that now, I kind of, I make it open-ended and again, direct them to the link, tell them what it is. You know, for example, boot camp, I can say, you know, free, if it's free for your program, you can say free or you can say a short-term boot camp, whatever you want to put on there. But then instead of putting the date, you're going to just um, allude to the link and they can put, they can click and then your, your website's always up to date. So then if you opt for always using what's on the internet or on your website, instead of what's on print or what's on old social media posts, then you know, if you direct them there, that you're safe, that they're getting the right information and then give them an easy next step. Things that are easy for us are not easy for our students. We all know that. Um, but sometimes we really have to be intentional about it when we we sort of understand something, um, but they don't. So you have to really break it down into step-by-steps. I think Neil calls it bread, breadcrumbs or something. You give them a little step to do at a time, leading them to where they wanna go. Like click here to register. And then when you go to your website, give them short, easy questions that they can respond easily to, even if they're on a phone, because they usually will be. Um, so just make it really, really foolproof for them. And then, like I said, out of all of these, I would always pick Facebook. The others are trendy and I'm too old to really know the Instagram <laughs> or TikTok or anything like that as well. Um, but really, honestly, it's what I get the best res results from. Even young students, because they get tagged or um, they tag somebody who's in their home who talks to them. And so it, it really, I think that one is your best bet, is, in my opinion, over the past couple of years, that's what I've found. And then the other thing about it is your messaging. Um, because when you communicate with students, it's so, so, so important to, to really connect. And, and you, know, you know those really high need students. I'm sure you could probably picture some who it took them every ounce of courage just to walk through your door. So really engaging with them and making them feel welcome is important. So you wanna be friendly. But a lot of times, you know, I, I, I've had teachers with me who have, have learned the hard way or, or you know, even I've done it probably in class where you're kinda, you, you might say something in a way that you would attract a K-12 or a younger crowd or something silly but it doesn't always resonate. If you have an older crowd who's really serious and they're ready to go, um, maybe using humor isn't the way to go. You know, so you always have to just read them and, and be really um, careful and intentional about that with your messaging. You wanna be warm, you always, I'm, now I'll tell you, everybody knows me, I'm, I'm one of those people that's really hard during the pandemic because I am a hugger and I'm very, you know, I, I am lovey-dovey kind, you know, and, and, and always on that side, but, you want to show that you care, but not go overboard with it. So show something that's like a positive, you know, with your imagery, maybe show um, a student who is, who has made it to a, a really cool job and they're really happy and, you know, do the inspirational stuff, but just don't go too far. And then um, be directive, um, but not bossy. So it's, it, it's a fine line, but you have to be in your messaging. You want to sort of be confident and tell them, go to door two, click here. This is, well, you know, no, you know, you really want to be confident because they don't always feel confident. So they're going to rely on yours and, and give them that direction. Be very, very prescriptive. Like, like I said, door number, go here, don't be late, you know, all of those kinds of things, but say it in a really, um, in the context of being encouraging as well. And then, like I said, I've already talked about, um, they need the information, but do not overload them with words because it's just too much in a message. And then be motivating, but not pushy. I struggle with this sometimes because I really, really stuck with my students. I wanted them to finish. So I was, I kind of didn't let go when I should have, but, um, but just make sure that you're always having that motivating factor because it's so hard as adults not to continue. And so if they see that messaging, it would help. An example of that is um, during the pandemic when we needed parapros, um, I said, you know, be a frontline hero because I mean, they are. So um, speaking to that timely need um, really helped motivate them. And then always, you know, understanding how hard it is for them and, and the barriers they have. 
and then always being accessible. And that's part of the website stuff. Being accessible is always what you want to be because it's not easy to take that first step. So we wanna make it as easy as possible. So I just put up here a couple of examples of some of the social media posting that I did. Um, and here's one. Um, at the top, I gave the information and then um, just showed the graphic it, and showing like, for example, with medical assisting, you know, the biggest thing that motivates them or they get super excited about is when they get a stethoscope, you know, or they, they get some equipment that makes them feel like a medical assistant. So I wanted to show that in the imagery. And again, going to one link, adulted.info forward slash scholarship. And that always, you know, that one area of entry point is important. And then um, on the bottom of it, I wanted to show you an example of, of how this could work. And this is just the first one that I screenshotted, but I'm sure there are even more that have way more um, of the shares, but this has six shares and comments. And then as you can see, people were, were tagging each other on it. Um, and as I look through those names, um, almost all of them came through as I, uh, as I look through those. So it's, it's kind of exciting because those are people that never would have known it if, those, if they hadn't been tagged by a friend. And so, so I want you to look at this. This is one of the first times I advertised boot camp, And I want you to kind of think about this. Um, maybe Neil can watch the chat. What do you think I did wrong about this social media post? based on what we just talked about. Okay, so I've got, it's, it, it is a lot of, of words. It's, yes. Uh, <laughs> one suggestion. Yes. Um, for sure, yeah. I would, you know, this is, I, this was in the phase. I wanted to tell them everything. So I put the details at the top, I put, three steps, which usually is pretty good three yeah. steps, but when there's a ton of words in them, it kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. And then I give all the information in the middle and then, you know, so it's, it's a lot. Another one was too much going on. Yes. Looks kind of busy. Yeah. Clean and simple is definitely the way to go. And, mm -hmm. and here's a rule of thumb I like to, to use and suggest with this is don't try to give them everything on the first step. There's no reason for them to have all the information on step one. You want to you want to tease them to take the next step. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to give them enough that they'll be interested to want to take the next step. Um, so that's a big part of it, I think, is just to, you know, if you're looking at this, um, I, I think you're trying to tell people, hey, you can get your high school equivalency diploma in just three days and it won't cost you anything. Yeah, Find and that's a lot it. more what, you know, as, as time goes on, that's a lot more to what my, my posting looks like now, because it really is true. As much as when Neil said that, I was like, but I want to tell him everything. Time um, told that it was true. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was um, two and a half years ago. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's that one's definitely not evergreen. The reason I pulled this one up is because somebody clicked on this um, back in December. They said, I showed up on such and such day. Well, a lot of times what happens if they have too many dates to look at, like here, they showed up on December 6th without having registered or anything, but it was two years ago. So that was two days different than what it was this year. <laughs> so it was, I, I had to go back and I found that they, they clicked on an old link and got to it. So you always want to make it something that's just going to be lasting. And then um, you guys got it. <laughs> And then a lot of times, uh, this is the other thing, this is kind of the nuts and bolts of it. A lot of times people think, well, I don't want to use my own personal, should I use my personal Facebook or do a school Facebook? This is the Wayne Township Adult Education Facebook when I was, when I was in that role for adult ed. This is what I used and it's still what they have. It's, you know, the imagery is really something inspirational. That was one of our graduations. Um, and then just something simple like your logo. Um, but here's what I will say. I have really found that using my own account and, and of course, you know, linking back to, to your site, but here's, here's the reason. You, first of all, you're a person and not an agency. So you have lots of friends and then, you know, friends, no friends, just like we saw in the tagging. Um, and so a lot of times people say, no, no, just use the school account. 
Um, but when you think about it, the school account doesn't have the friend network you do, and your um, it, it doesn't have the traffic coming through because it has only people who've liked it that see things. Um, so if you post only on that and, and you don't link it to a person, I don't think you get near as good results. Um, I still put it on there so that if somebody looks at that site and they find it, um, they see all of the positive things that we have going on, but it's never what gets the traction. It's always the personal account because then your friends, no friends, no teachers, no students, you know, and, and it just grows from there. Um, okay, and then the other thing is your email newsletter. A couple of things about that. This is just an example of one. Um, and again, you're going to see a lot of Wayne Township stuff. Like I said, I, I, um, I am always going to be Wayne Township at my heart. But um, this year, having done stuff with Neil, um, I've been able to work with so many adult ed programs. So really, my heart's with all of them. But the examples I have are with Wayne Township for right now, because those are usually um, those are this is the journey I traveled when we were doing that. Um, and so with your email newsletter, uh, the first thing is do all you can to switch to electronic. There are lots of services. Um, I'm sure Neil knows more because he has all of these little software things, but you've got constant contact, you have active campaign, you have um, MailChimp, all kinds of email automations. But even if you just, I mean, no matter how primitively you have to start on your email newsletter, even if it's not, doesn't have graphics and doesn't look like this, getting the communication out there to your students is really key through email and trying to get them used to checking their email and also include other things, other people in the district, like um, some of your board members or administrators, anybody who's within the district that you have an email, share that with them. And then it's really important too, um, that when you, when it is electronic, that it be translatable, because I think it's just it's it's so much more powerful um, and then deliverable right in their hand because it comes to most people check their email on their phones um, and so it's right in their hand and you know they're sitting at a doctor's appointment they might scroll through and read something from your newsletter um, and then make sure it's shareable make sure you always say you know if you know of anybody who could use this have a referral um, thing at the bottom and then make sure in this, again, you don't wanna to be too wordy. You wanna have inspirational stories. You wanna make it timely and current. And you wanna have really like concrete information for them. And then again, promote sharing that out because a lot of people come to your program through somebody who shared something from the email. Include pictures, which means if you backtrack that from, from that a little bit, make sure you take lots of pictures. Um, you always have to you know, get the release, um, the photo release. Um, but I always, with Wayne Township, I always, if students just didn't like to have their picture taken and there was no legal or protective reason that they didn't, didn't want a photo, then I always sort of begged them to let me because I said, you know, we do a slideshow and all these things. And, and they usually say, well, okay. Um, because you want to be able to capture those moments. There are so many powerful moments. If you just stop and look around in your classroom or where you are, if you just took a snapshot, a mental snapshot of that, it's really powerful. There are powerful things going on all the time and they don't get captured. So promote that and then maybe have a shared Google Drive with all of your pictures so that everybody could upload to it. And then the other thing is your is special events or flyers. Those kind of go hand in hand because you use those together to, to draw people in. Um, and so the thing about special events is that, um, if I can get this to click here. <laughs> huh. There we go. Okay, sorry, had a little technical issue. Um, you wanna use modern designs. And, and one thing that I love to use is Canva. Um, because they already have templates for you. You don't really have to be a, a, a great graphic designer. You just have to uh, have an eye for putting stuff together and, and envisioning putting your own pictures in the templates. So that's something to check out. There, you know, I have a paid account because of what we do, but there are free accounts that are really good too. And then um, I always say this, think about, again, that idea of the doorway. How many doorways can people come into this event? It should only be one. So no matter what you promote on a flyer or promote for an event, make sure you the direction to sign up is X, whatever it is. Make sure it's the same, the same link, the same whatever, because you don't want, again, you don't want people you know, from all different areas and you not addressing those needs. 
Um, and that can happen. I learned it the hard way. <laughs> um, and then think about who is responding um, because you really have to ha define a role because if somebody has a question or there's an email that comes in or, or whatever happens in that regard, you've got to have somebody designated to take care of that crowd that's going to be attending that event. Um, and then think about ways to engage them um, with those power words and stuff like that. Um, and then make sure you have the right information. Again, always promote sharing. It's really important. And then include some of your best, most fun pictures with it. So, you know, and so that always helps to sort of drive people to your event. So then we talked about a timeline. You know, when you think about your marketing, okay, with all of those things we talked about in mind, um, the first sort of, I sort of broke it up into quarters. And so like the first quarter, July, August, September, overall, we're all thinking about those five goals we started with, all of them. We're always doing that. There's no time where we don't care about a measurable skill gain or we don't care about attendance. It's not that, it's that there are a couple of times when you can really push your efforts in one way and it'll kind of help to move your program in the right direction. So for example, the first um, quarter of July, August, September is, is you wanna really focus on enrollment and retention. And here's why, um, I'm gonna, move myself out of the way here. Um, the, so, you know, we have back to school events all the time um, in the K-12 program. There's, you know, usually a couple of different back to school nights or school supply nights or, you know, events to meet your teacher. And it really just takes a conversation with someone in the district um, who really understands your mission because you don't want to you're not promoting taking anyone who is um, to drop out and come into your program. That's never what our goal is. What we wanna do again is speak to those people in the family who might need your services who aren't in K-12, their parents, their siblings, their you know, cousins, whoever. Um, so as they come to those events, you could have a booth and it could be as simple as having one of those flyers. It's really important because you can really give a good boost to your program doing that. The other thing is you will be shocked at how many of your other, if those of you who are tied up in a system, how many of the schools, the K-12 schools, even administrators and teachers in those schools who don't know that the services that your adult ed provides. So it's really an important way of getting people to know as well what your services are right within your district. Um, and, and again, it's about providing value. If some of you, I mean, some of you have told me before, we don't have a great relationship with our district, you know, so I don't know if that would work. I, here's what I would say. Don't give it up because somebody will hear it and understand your mission. But here's the key, provide value to your corporation. For example, um, when we started the Parapro program a few years ago in Wayne Township, we um, really wanted those students to be a pipeline in to be paras in the school system. And even so much so as to have experience in the schools. So we, we in essence, gave them kind of volunteer help for six weeks. They didn't even have to pay because they go into the schools and also they get to know them, which was really good. And then there's always a need. You would be shocked if you looked at your districts, how many para positions are open. There are over 60, I think, in Wayne right now. And it's really important to, to reach out to those who, who want it. And that was a great way. So it was a solution. We presented it as, hey, I have an idea. Here's a solution. Can we partner with you for this solution? And now it's their favorite thing. And it really helped to promote a really good relationship. So make sure that you don't give up and hey, reach out to me if you have, chances are I've done it <laughs> as far as reaching out to the district. So if you need ideas or want to bounce ideas off of me, then reach out. Um, social media posts, again, the back to school stuff. And then you look at your high traffic areas, especially at the back to school time, like your school supply, your school supply drive or um, your food pantries or your churches in mission who might give out school clothes or, you know, those kinds of things. You want to look at those high traffic areas where students exist and they hang out. Laundromat is one. I didn't put it on there, but places that you know that you would likely to see your adult ed crowd. And that's where you want to put the flyers because the, again, they don't know that it exists. And when they have nothing but time and their, their laundry is drying, maybe they can check out your site. So um, make sure that, that you look at those spaces. And then for retention, you want to, here's, here's what another 
awesome benefit of having a website you can control like that is that your website always collects people's names. So think about, you know, a student calls in, says they're interested, and they get all the information from your receptionist and they hang up. And then life happens and they change their mind and they back out or they forget. And then it just never happens. Um, how do you know who that was or how to reach them? And a lot of times, um, you know, they, that happens all the time individually to staff members, you know, people that ask about it. So it's really important um, to have that list of students. So if somebody clicked on your website and they said, yeah, they're interested in X, Y, or Z, that website collects that information. So you can reach out to them later and say, hey, I noticed that you said you were interested in getting a diploma back in July, but here it is September and we haven't seen you come in that reaching out makes the difference in most students. Because if they clicked once, they were interested enough to give you their information once, just like that person was introduced, interested enough to call once, then they likely will follow through with some encouragement. And so you wanna have tools to do that. Um, and then message them. And again, we'll, we'll talk about this, you know, we can talk about this in another time because this could be a whole section in itself but please text instead of call because we all have students who they will not answer a call. It's especially if they're younger, it's just the way the generation is. I think they, they are a texting generation. So if they're not, you know, they won't answer a call, especially if it's from a school or if they don't recognize the number, but a text is really easy for them to just shoot back to you. And then I really use this messaging as a way to manage students you know, with directions you have for them or special information or, or, you know, confirmations that they'll be there, surveys about, you know, what, what they want for a, a career fair, you know, that kind of thing. So use it to manage your students because if you're planning something, you can get good information if you just send them a text. And so that really helps. And then follow up with any absences, that's always something we do ongoing. We're never not going to follow up, but especially be vigilant in the beginning. Um, and again, use those ways that we just talked about. Text them, have something in the newsletter, um, go back to social media and, and you know, put some kind of funny ad that says, you know, uh, I think I put on there, didn't, did you forget to finish something? And it had a pair of, of running shoes almost to the finish line. And it really, a lot of people responded to that because they knew what that meant. Like, oh yeah, I need to finish school and come back to school. So always gear that messaging in that way. And then if we go back to the timeline, we think about that second quarter, the October, November, December time. And um, when we look at that messaging, that's really when you wanna focus on, you're in the thick of it and you really wanna focus on capturing those measurable skill gains and your HSEs for a couple of reasons. One is because you're just about to um, enter a break and we all know that sometimes we lose students over the break. They get used to being at home and they don't come back. Um, and again, we're ramping up for making our goals by December. And so that's a good time to start doing that. So again, using your messaging to get that get through to them. Um, if you have a list of students who you know, you pull it from mentors and they haven't post-tested, um, send them a message, ask your teacher about post-testing today. You know, something, something that will remind them that you, you remember that, that they're there and they need to take that next step. Um, we have boot camps available. That might be a good time to get those people who are level three and up into boot camps. provide lots of options. Um, those of you that did see CoAbe, um, Denise Esslinger from Wayne talked a lot about how they do their boot camps and it's, you know, they offer four different options. They have a day camp and night camp and afternoon camp and a partial camp. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it satisfies all needs. And then again, following up with the absences and checking out those barriers. Fall, it, you know, right after fall is a good time to thinking about um, a resource fair or, or life coaching those barriers. And again, those can be um, captured through that messaging. Um, and again, making sure that you make those post tests and then messaging students about that post testing, whether it's through text or any other way, and then celebrating the success. That's so important. You know, we, 
we really motivate students to do it. And when somebody makes it, it's really important. Some students are so visual, visual and are so motivated by seeing other students that you really wanna showcase that. And I don't think that we show that enough. And then advertise your graduation because as December approaches, it's sort of like that closure time. It's the end of a semester for a lot of colleges and people start thinking about graduation. So, you know, let them know that even if you pass in December, we wanna see you at our June graduation. You know, those kind of, that, that kind of verbiage. And then January, February, March, it goes right back and here's the ebb flow again because it goes right back into you want that enrollment it's after you know the winter break and students often come back really slowly or don't come back at all and so you really want to make sure you know that you're communicating with them and one good way to do that is again k-12 has a lot of sort of back to school things that are in january gearing up for the new semester as well um, and even, you know, choir events, band events, those kinds of things. Um, those are times that you really need to be present and able to talk to the parents that are there. And then the social media posting, there's so many good um, ads that are really motivating, even on Canva, that are talking about a fresh start or a New Year's resolution, because that January, February, March time is about fresh starts and, and renewing things. And then, so, so speak to that because that's really gonna motivate someone. And then the flyers, again, at those high traffic areas because in January, February, March is the time when they really um, sort of market to the community. Um, it's just after a holiday and it's, you know, there are lots of needs that people have at that time. So make sure that you're always keeping your flyers there as well. And then for retention, um, it's the same. You're, again, reach out to people maybe who back in July, reached out and they never finished or even, you know, just 90 days ago, you know, look at that time. And then again, message them and manage them just like we talked about before. And then um, in the May, the April, May, June time, it is all about completions and completion means whether that is making um, the next step in your English language learning journey or making a gain in your levels in the tape, those can be completion because you're, you're following through with that goal, or if students are ready, actually getting their HSE or certification. So again, you wanna market your boot camps and the options that are there. Check, this is really important this time of year, check for people who came through and they passed maybe all but like two sections. You could speak to that person and really give them some targeted instruction and get them to pass before the end of the year. And then um, post-testing those students and messaging them about that post-testing, again, that's a really, it's another really important milestone time and celebrating growth. And then now more than ever, talk about your graduation because it's coming sooner. And then you want to really capture your student success stories. What I did, what I found that was so powerful just last year is we had them, um, again, we're using messaging to manage students. They message their RF, RSVP of whether or not they would be at graduation. And when they click submit, we had it redirect to our success stories portal where it just, it was a very simple thing. They already had their phone in their hand. If you have a nice positive message to share, uh, click here. Or if you wanna type a message, click here. And we had over 70 people respond and it was so powerful. We can't say it as meaningfully as our students do and as inspirationally as some of our students do. It's just so heartfelt. And so it was really cool. And what we did, we turned that into a slideshow for graduation um, with adulted.info forward slash grad. If anybody wants to check it out, if you're feeling down and you wanna be reminded of why it is we do what we do, it's, it's fun to see those student stories. And then the other thing, um, we talked about those other two types of marketing really quickly. Earned marketing means that um, you have earned it through experience and others promote you. So what that means is it doesn't come from you. So, you know, encourage your students to do Google reviews and respond to them, good or bad, respond to them. Um, because being active and wanting to please the community is really important at this time. And, you know, we're really in an age of Google reviews. Everybody looks at reviews before they do things. So um, start to really respond to those and then share those positive stories on social media. That is so important. So what I mean is not what you're sharing, but positive stories of students. I can't tell you how many students I've seen because of being in those community chats 
Um, I might see a student who said, you know, thanks to my adult ed program, I'm now a medical assistant, or I now have a high school diploma. Screenshot those, ask for permission and share it because it's really important. I mean, it's in the words of the student. So that's one really powerful thing. We did that with a lot of students. We had really vocal students last year and it was just really cool. Um, and then community partnerships, you know, form a partnership where you create you know, services for their employees or, or whatever that would be. And then in return, they're going to, to talk, um, talk you up and, and tell your story and speak for you. So that's earned from them. You earn their trust. And so they are your referral. And then paid, there's a couple of different things. We'll talk about the good and the bad. You can do print ads, TV ads, radio, billboards, direct mail, paid search, all of that stuff. But here's the thing. It, don't try them all. And when it comes to deciding, there's a couple key things I want to tell you about. Here's how I think of it. And it might work differently for other people or in your specific community. But in the ones that I've seen, here's what I've seen to be most, most helpful. Just because I'm techie <laughs> or I'm not really techie after my husband is and I kind of ride his coattails um, does not mean that I don't think flyers are important. Do not underestimate the importance of that. You have a print ad out there, a link um, to your website. It's very, very important, that's, that's important. So if you put something in a local newspaper, that could be helpful. Um, I've seen TV and radio um, be helpful for places like the Indianapolis Urban League. So I'm sure it would speak to students. It's expensive, but it would. Um, and billboards, um, a, lot, a lot of programs have started using billboards with their link to their website on the billboard. And it really um, speaks to the community in that way. And then the other thing at the end I put is sort of some type of community sponsorship, your, your local chamber, for example. Um, being a member of that and being active in that just just because you're does, you're not a business doesn't mean that you you couldn't have value for that group and spread the word in that way. It really moved the needle for um, a lot of programs. And then you know the direct mail, page search, Facebook ads, social media, the the ad, the paid part of it. I I think your posting does just as well. I don't think that it's necessary. You might want to try it, but. Um, in my experience, it's not any better than just making a post in the in the website in the Facebook groups. So um, that's my take on it anyway. And then again, make sure it always ties back to your website. Don't make it confusing for where they go to. So that was a quick rundown. I just sort of blasted through everything. Um, but if we can help you with that, we would love to. Like I said, one of the things that I love is being able to work with so many different awesome programs. So um, there's a couple of things we can do to help that. We have um, a, a kit that is, Neil can speak to it better, but it's marketing around those seasons that we talked about. So um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. I didn't have an Australian accent, so sorry that you missed that this week. <laughs> well, if you missed that, <laughs> then, uh, you know, the information was more important than the accent. Savannah said, thanks, uh, very informative. Uh, very Great. informational. So awesome. yeah, thank you for that. There's so many good things that you've pulled into the mix here on this. Um, and we'd love to chat with anybody who who either sparks something or they're interested. Um, like Amy said, we do have these kits uh, that we've put together that will be for the seasons of the year uh, to help guide or coach whatever's needed most of all. Um, we actually spent some time yesterday doing just that. Um, with the program and, and just spending time to help uh, work out some of the processes and systems and, and different things like that. And by talking to different programs left and right, we, uh, you know, we, we get all sorts of ideas from that. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, real helpful and, and real useful there. And um, well, the next thing coming up, right, Jen, uh, right at the end of the month is the Virtual Institute. Absolutely. So excited. Yeah. And we're, we're going to yeah. be doing it with that connectable platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's why it's going. just especially yeah. so keep your ears tuned. But <laughs> you guys, I yeah. love the information that you provided, Amy. I especially like all the things that you connected in regards to it's really all about building relationships from following up on social media to, you know, sharing their stories to partnerships, to community sponsorships. It is all about building relationships, whatever. Yes. It doesn't matter how you do it, but 
that is a key to recruitment and the whole timeline. I love the timeline in the sense of that those are reminders that you can put on your calendar at those particular times. Therefore, it just pops up during that season every single time because life does happen and we do get busy. (laughs) Yes. If I didn't put it on there, I would forget it. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I agree. That's all all good things to be thinking about. And, and, you know, I want to go back to one last thing. What Amy shared is overwhelming. There's no two ways about it. If you were to try to take all this on, it'd be too much. Mm -hmm. Um, What you have to do is identify just a couple things that you can roll out, you know, maybe between here and the end of the year, what are a couple of things that would, that would move the needle uh, for your program if you implemented those and start working towards getting the information or doing whatever it is to, to move things forward. Just, just a few things. Um, I even say just one more thing than you would have done otherwise, Mm -hmm. and you'll be moving yourself further down the line. So don't get lost in all the details. The details are there. I, I liken it to, this is like a, uh, a buffet. Um, it's not all you can eat because (laughs) that would be too much. Uh, it's, you got to select from the table, a few key choice items that will help make a difference. Um, and so look at it that way and make good use of it. And, uh, you know, we, we hope we can hear the stories of what you've done from it. Yeah, Absolutely. So if you are watching the replay of this, go ahead and make a comment below, give us a thumbs up and share with a friend or another administrator that you work with because IAACE is here for you. And so is Neil and Amy. So (laughs) until next time, we'll see you. Well, I guess we'll see you in April at the end of the month. Yeah. All right. Great. Ta-ta. Bye.